Hello and welcome to News You Can Use. Uh, I'm sorry you'll have to bear with me because I have a sore throat. But let's try and quickly get through all the personal finance news that can impact your money life. How can we not get that out there? All right, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is inflation. The retail inflation that we see in our economy has jumped to a seven-month high. The uh, consumer price index, which measures what you and I pay for various goods and services, has come in at 6% for uh, right now, and that's compared to around 4 4.5% last year. So clearly, things are getting more expensive. The problem is that the RBI has not raised in interest rates, which means that your real return from uh, fixed deposits and other interest-bearing investments is shrinking because real return is basically your not you know the interest rate minus inflation and inflation is expanding so your real return is shrinking uh, that's not good news really so plus things are getting more expensive so really a double whammy here for retail investors okay the second thing is that you know last week there's been a lot of noise around market levels equity markets have seen all kinds of levels last week and uh, i would like to talk a little bit about that as you can see there are you know a few headlines because um, on Monday, the markets fell 3%. The next day, the markets went up 3%. So it's been absolutely crazy. This is to be expected. Now, the reasons given could be different. Some people are talking about US Fed and interest rates there. Some people are talking about uh, the Russia-Ukraine feud and, you know, possible attack, etc. Uh, of course, the war doesn't directly affect us. But what happens is that the expectations change around markets and it spooks the markets big investors institutional investors traders they just want to take the risk off the table because they have a high level of daily risk in equity markets not like you and me we are investing for our goal eight to ten years away only if your goal is a year or you know 18 months away should you be bothered about this kind of volatility and perhaps shift what you need for that goal out of the equity market because it's getting too volatile and put it in something safe if your goal is one or a year and a half away, but not if your goal is five, seven, eight years away, because these things will happen. The near term volatility is going to be high because what's happening with inflation worldwide, what's happening with liquidity and interest rates worldwide and the geopolitics, which is happening worldwide. So be wary, wary of that, but don't give too much importance to these headlines as such if you are in for the long term. OK, what else? Um, yeah, so there is this one news around uh, uh, Zomato being at a new low. So, you know, last year, a lot of these, uh, in, uh, last year, in the last few months, a lot of these uh, new age businesses uh, came up with their IPOs. Zomato, uh, um, Nika, Policy Bazaar, um, which the Paytm, yeah. So, these are all tech-enabled uh, businesses which are doing, you know, which are in different fields, but all tech-enabled. And they got some super high valuations. Now, whether you agree with it or not, fact is that they had valuations in billions of dollars, but the profits were really, really small. Now, it works. The valuations work well when, you know, there is euphoria in the market, which was there till just a few weeks ago. But when things become uncertain, the really high valuation, which is not supported by high business income, high profits, crashes. And that's what we are seeing now. Investing in IPOs is anyway risky for retail investors. And, you know, you really have to play your cards right for that. And most often than not, it doesn't work out. Investing in IPOs of new age businesses, which you don't understand well, how are they going to make profits? Then some of them are not making profits. How are they going to sustain those profits? We don't know. I mean, we know how a toothpaste business works because we'll always need toothpaste. But a digital um, supermarket that sells toothpaste, is that a lucrative business? Will that business make profits? We don't know because the dynamics are really, really different. Uh, so that's the thing. Keep in mind that you don't want to take too much risk in such businesses. Uh, if you want to invest, you know, keep it a very small rate. So, yeah, I mean, um, for some people, some experts say that this was uh, to be expected. Okay, oil prices touch a high, $96. Again, Russia and Ukraine crisis has been cited in the headline. However, oil prices have been on an uptrend for a while and it does mean that our domestic fuel prices are also likely to go up, which have been going up. We are already paying so much. The government usually never reduces when oil prices fall, at least not by the same extent, and uh, but they do increase by the same extent. So beware, uh, rising fuel prices will impact you directly and direct, indirectly, directly because you will be paying more for petrol and diesel and also uh, you know, any transportation cost will increase and that can percolate into many goods and services in the economy. Lastly, the big news, LIC IPO is out. 
and that's really quite the big news. Uh, the, we've been talking for, for the last couple of weeks. The company has finally filed its IPO documents with SEBI and um, uh, the estimates. So, so basically, they, the government wants to sell some stake in LIC so that they raise some money to spend in the economy. Uh, this is around 5% stake, which is going to be offered to the public. Um, there are talks of some 10% discount for LIC policyholders, but nothing has come out yet, but we'll see. So what uh, So what to look forward to? Well, LIC is a huge company, India's largest insurance company with 65% market share. Um, it is uh, at an enterprise value of roughly around 5.4 lakh crores according to the IPO documents. And experts are saying to expect uh, a market valuation of anywhere between 13 lakh crores to 15 lakh crores, which values it at around three times its enterprise value, which is what is comparable to its peers. So we don't, if that happens, then you can expect a share price of, you know, about 1500 to 3000 maybe per share. Uh, but we don't really know how they're going to price it, which is going to be important because remember, while LIC is the largest insurer, it is also losing market share over the last few years. And uh, uh, one of the numbers was interesting in the IP, uh, in the IPO documents. LIC's uh, premium growth um, over the last five years, from uh, FI sixteen to FI twenty one, has been around nine percent. Whereas private insurance life insurance companies have seen a premium premium growth of around sixteen percent. So LIC is lagging behind in terms of the pace of growth and also losing market share. So this is not good news. Another interesting thing in the IPO documents was you know really how much commissions are paid through the premiums you pay <clears throat> for your policies. First year premium, 70-80% of the premium goes to the agent, doesn't even get invested. We already are realizing that LIC policies, um, investment returns are really, really low. Refer to my previous uh, news you can use where we decoded the uh, new um, G1 LARP policy, which was giving like 1-3% to return. So your LIC policy premium uh, returns are really, really low. And the next generation realizes that term life insurance policy is the best way to have a contingency plan for untimely death. And private insurance companies are way ahead in that compared to LIC. So uh, are the years ahead going to prove um, positive for LIC's market share? After all, you know, one has to keep up market share if one wants to keep making money at the same pace. We don't know. So there is lots of risk there. Uh, we don't know the share price yet. So one has to wait and see if the share is priced such that, um, uh, you know, it leaves some value uh, versus, uh, you know, what they're offering on the issue price. Uh, then maybe there is something there for investors. I would still suggest, you know, don't obsess over it. Wait for the company to list. If you really want to invest, pick it up from the secondary market. Nobody's stopping you. You don't have to rush into the IPO really. Well, but it's an exciting IPO, so we will keep talking about it. Thank you for listening. That's all for this week. Uh, stay tuned for news you can use next week again.